I invite you to sit back and to listen to our songbird, who is not going to be singing this morning, but will be speaking to you from her heart, inspiring, uplifting, enriching through a spirit-filled talk. Dr. Sonia Davidson. Oops. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome to our center for spiritual living in Kingston, Jamaica, and that includes those on the World Wide Web. And you will um, indulge me for a moment while I power up in the modern way. Yes. Yes. My talk this morning is very much of a revision for most of us, but I think from time to time it is very, very important that we remind ourselves of some very familiar truths. The topic is thought the seed of destiny. There may be times in one's life when things seem to go wrong. Well-made plans may go awry. Expectations are not met. Delays in realizing some cherished goal illness may intervene, or we may just not feel as if we're getting there. Or as Jack Addington, in the chapter of his book, Psychogenesis, right, the title of which was, What to Do When Things Go Wrong, he mentioned the most common of them all, when unexpected breaks in the natural flow of daily life comes about. It may not be anything tremendously big, it might just be little things, little nuisances, but nonetheless, if one is not vigilant, it could really cause breaks in the flow, the natural flow of our daily life. There's a popular cable television reality feature titled, What Would You Do? In which, oh, some of you know it. <laughs> there are a variety of scenarios are enact enacted with the intention of amazing, confusing, and even disturbing members of the public for the purpose of analyzing their reactions of the unsuspecting participants. Many of these unsuspecting participants surprise themselves, some positively, some negatively, by their reactions to these extreme, unexpected situations. What about us? How often do we surprise ourselves by our reactions to the unexpected? What do we tell ourselves when we are disappointed by the behavior of others? What is our response? When rain falls for the first time in weeks, when you had planned an outdoor barbecue, or even your wedding, what about when the plumber doesn't show up when you have taken the day off in order to accommodate him? How do we react to these everyday nuisances? How we react, our training is a training ground for some of life's more significant challenges. Jack Addington shares a story of a businessman who had worked diligently for years and through perseverance had built a successful business. Then at the peak of this business of success, a highway was built which bypassed the town in which the business operated. In next to no time, the customers stopped coming until there was not a single customer. Devastated, the businessman sought Addington's advice. The consolation was quick and definite. 
The consultation was quick and definite. Dr. Addington asked the question, how did you make this business succeed in the first place? Answered the businessman, I did it by using all the ingenuity I had, but how can I do it all over? And Addison's reply, what would you say to someone who came to you with the same problem? The businessman, I remember you saying in one of your lectures, we have to trust the power within us to do the thing that has to be done. We need to trust it moment by moment. Not too long after, the businessman started another business in another location, using all the ingenuity and creativity he had, and his business became 10 times better than the one he had before. The freeway, we are told, turned out to be a blessing in disguise. It jolted him to take action out of his complacency. The only reason why it was a blessing in disguise was because the businessman met his problem in a positive way. I am sure many of us who have, ex and I see us advisedly, who have experienced the chick V, chick un gunya virus are surprising themselves at their reactions. I have met some people who are predicting five to 15 years of intimate relationships with the chick fee. <laughs> some are lamenting that their youthful days are over. <laughs> Others have shrugged off the painful limbs with good humor and optimism, despite ungainly efforts to perform previously simple tasks. It is not so much what happens to us, but how we react to what happens that determines what is the ultimate outcome. Emmett Fox, from whom I borrowed the title, says, thought is the seed of destiny. Thought is the seed of destiny. Jack Addington advises us ever so often to stop for a moment and ask yourself, what do I think about the problems in my life? In other words, what are the conditions and situations in my life that I'm referring to as a problem? If that is the way we see them, that is the way we'll continue to, to, they'll continue to be, just that, a problem. Phineas Parkhurst Quimby, very distinguished name, a spiritual teacher, early um, influence of the science of mind, in new thought, the spiritual teacher and healer said, mind is matter in solution. This one bears some thinking. Mind is matter in solution, and matter is mind in form. Okay. When faced with a challenge and we don't know what to do, then what do we do? When the ball seems to be in the court of another and not in ours, and we feel powerless, when things seem to be falling apart, it's no time for self-pity or to cry foul or to be exasperated or angry or to lose faith. The last thing we want to do is to criticize ourselves or blame others. Remember, you are creating your destiny as you react. Fortunately, mind can be changed. We have to think our way out of any rut that we have thought ourselves into. There is no other way. This is the law. It can be to us a blessing, this law, or a curse, depending on how we choose to use it. Yes, choose we can. So let us choose to make it a blessing, the fact that we can think ourselves out of any rut that we have thought ourselves into. Emmett Fox, again, 
says, it's a long passage, but I had to take it in full because it was so arresting to me. There is no such thing as luck. Nothing ever happens by chance. Everything good or bad comes into your life, our lives, as a result of an inescapable law. The only operator of the law is none other than yourself. You and you alone order the goods and know that they are being delivered. You just got to accept it or you got to return it. And, <laughs> and as long as you go on thinking wrongly about yourself and life, the same sort of difficulties will continue to harass you. Every seed, he's blunt, he, every seed must eventually bring forth after its own kind, and thought is the seed of destiny. And he continues, if you want to change any situation in your life, you must change your thought about it and keep it changed. You can't change it this minute and then two minutes later, you change it back to what it was. To change your thought and keep it changed is a way to build a new mental equivalent. It is the secret of accomplishment. You already have a mental equivalent, equivalent that is your life today. Whatever your life is, you have a mental equivalent for it, a pattern that fits it just right. So you must build a new pattern of mental equivalent for the things you want, and then they will come into your life. To do so, we need, unquote, and I quote, to, de to do so, we need to remember from whence cometh our help. And there's an affirmation which I think just reinforces this. I now lift up my whole being to the inflow of divine strength and infinite wisdom. I accept the creative action and direction of the spirit within me. I am the high priest in the temple of my own being. I just wanted to quote the last one. I am the high priest in the temple of my own being. Come on. I am the high priest in the temple of my own being. Yes, with our authority. So, you feel stuck? Relax. Once I reversed my car into ground with soil that was much softer than I had realized. When it was time to leave, the car refused to budge. Although I kept my feet on the gas pedal, it just wouldn't budge. In fact, the more I pressed, the deeper did the wheels sink into what I later realized was mud. I was stuck and my car had to be lifted out of the ruts that my wheels had made. My efforts at acceleration was an act of futility and only made matters worse. No matter what ruts we may fall into, if we look to the sky, look to the light, raise your consciousness, that's the way that we will dig ourselves out of a pit. You cannot dig yourself out of a pit by just digging. You got to, right? Raise yourself out. So we climb out from the pit of any unwanted experiences. We must climb out of our own will and by our own efforts. The light overhead is our only guide. There's a new highway which is a, called a bypass, and it is a bypass for Mont Diablo. It is perilously steep, although it's not winding as our familiar Mont Diablo. It has few curves, and it has deep, deep, it's very deep, slopes, and very steep slopes. But as you drive, there is just resplendent, verdant beauty. I just advise everybody, if you're not the driver, of course, <laughs> to enjoy it. Be not deceived, however. It behoves us to be very careful but fearless as we drive. This beautiful stretch of road reduces the time of travel significantly, but presents challenges to the unskilled driver. 
or to the one who is driving a less than perfectly tuned vehicle. Only the unskilled would consider changing gears while negotiating one of the many long steep slopes. There are many signs warning us of impending danger which some may choose to ignore only to find the need to take risky defensive action in the middle of a critical leg of the journey. While I did not witness this myself, I'm told that some drivers have failed to negotiate the challenging soaps as their vehicles were not up to the task, although they, the drivers, were. Is our consciousness up to the task? Are we vigilant? Are we learning from all the challenges that we make? I know that there are warnings of the work that we need to do. Do we wait until the last minute to change gear and find that we need to do our affirmations and our treatments, our affirmative prayer, or are we all prayed up? You see, life is a journey, but unlike the one I just described, it is beautiful if we pay attention to and appreciate the many wonderful things along the way. There are laws which govern what we get from it, including how to escape danger. The way is strewn with lessons which we may choose to ignore at our peril. Each lesson learned prepares us for the next phase of life. When faced with the steep inclines and the precipitous declines of life, our answer lies in turning our thoughts inwards to the inner mind, which, says Joel Goldsmith, not only shows us the solution to any problem and the right direction to take in any situation, but being the universal mind, it is the consciousness of every individual, every individual, and brings every person and circumstance together for the good of the whole. So all you have to do is set your goal, fix your eyes on the prize, and allow the universal mind to bring together everything that is required in order to fulfill that goal. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, Isaiah 26, verse 3. Joel goes with again, yes, he's, he's my inspiration today, as well, along with Emmett Fox. It is not required of us that we suffer our way through life or strive endlessly for some desired good. The law within us maintains our rights and privileges. The more quickly we relax and the more quickly we contemplate our desires, the more quickly and easily they are achieved. How often have we been attempted to force an outcome or force a demonstration? If we are tempted, we just need to say to ourselves, I relax in the whole spirit of God. I invite the indwelling Christ to speak through my mouth and perform miracles through my mind. You make up your own affirmation, but you have to invite the spirit, which is God, the, I know it is the indwelling spirit, to speak through you and to act through you. Someone once taught me that the one way to manage a car with skids is never to step on the brakes. And, to, or to, and to, I think to try the, or to try to, to turn the wheel in the opposite direction. Yes, we need to just relax and let go to demonstrate. Emmett Fox advises us, he gives us good advice about prayer. He said, lest we be tempted to pray under pressure when things seem to be going wrong, he says, we must just relax. The great enemy of prayer is a sense of tension. When you are tense, you are always working from the outside in. Tension in prayer is probably the greatest cause of failure to demonstrate. Remember, he says, the mind always works inefficiently when you are tense. Therefore, the mind always works inefficiently when you are relaxed. When you think, I must demonstrate this or must get that in three days, you are tense and you're using willpower and you will do more harm than good. Here again, he advised, relax mentally, draw away from the problem, and the action of God will open the door for you and you will be free. Don't struggle, 
just allow the relevant thoughts to just flow freely as we do in our affirmative prayer, in our affirmations. The only provisor is that the thoughts must be positive and they must relate to the thing that you are desiring to achieve. Friends, we are here to express God. All the mystics have told us this, and we know this intuitively. There is something in us which tells us so. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. I, and this is my personal interpretation, I interpret his words to mean that he had come to reveal the infinite possibilities within, which is available to each one of us who understands his Christ nature. To express God is to express the attributes of God. We are expressing God to a greater or lesser extent according to how willing we are to maintain a conscious awareness of who and what we are. Whenever we think of any challenge, let go and turn our minds to God. Turn our minds to God. Never hold on to any thought which denies your good. The moment you find yourself thinking a negative thought, you should reject it instantly and immediately switch your attention to the presence of God. And <laughs> Emmett Fox says, do not even stop to say goodbye, but break the connection instantly. Occupy your mind with good. This is the way to happiness. My friends, trust in the Lord with all thy might. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. Namaste.